Today we're interviewing the godmother of boxing, the coal miner's daughter, Christy Martin. Some called her the Mike Tyson of female boxing. She's definitely the first to put women's boxing on the map and one of the hardest punchers, in my opinion, pound for pound in the history of the sport. Let's get into it. There she is. There she is. Took me a second. How are you guys? Hey, Chris. Sorry for the back and forth. We made no it happen. No problem, no problem. What's up? What's up? How you guys doing? Good, we're good. How are you doing today? You know, trying to hang in there, grow up and be a boxing promoter, and, and uh, trying to promote this Netflix documentary that's about to, to come out Tuesday. That's well, great. Is it, is it about you? It is. It's about the yeah. craziness of, you know, the boxing, the whole boxing thing and the rise and then the, the whole domestic violence being shot and stabbed and all that crap so, so it's it's pretty interesting the underdog story so, so I mean, what, you what are hold, hold on you are you know not not you are basically the first woman world champion ever correct not not really but i mean i'd like to take credit for that but women have been boxing since like back in the 1800s yeah but nobody I, really gave a shit back then yeah well, you know, I, I'll give you that. I think you're right. I I came along at the right time. I was in the right place, and I was ready to take advantage of the opportunity. I mean, everybody tuned in in the 90s to see Tyson. They were watching all those big Don King cards with Chavez and Trinidad and all those guys. And, you know, I was lucky. I got to tag along and, and ride on their coattails. It was it was great. So, so yeah, it was. I remember you from those cards. Um, so let's start from the beginning. You grew up in, in where? Southern West Virginia, coal miner's what? daughter. And... I read that you were you went to college to play basketball on a scholarship. Yes, yes. I well, went to a small college in West Virginia. I have a teaching degree and uh, played basketball while I was there. What well, position did you play? Uh, you know what? It's crazy because I uh, I played like a three and and a four even as short as really? I am, but really? but I was smart. You know, and I was I was playing at a small school. It wasn't like I what? was at a Division one college. But I was smart, you know. I could, I understood how to use your body to block people out, box them out, get the rebounds. Yeah, I, can, I, break. I can do all that. I can see maybe a three, but a four. Wow. Even sometimes, you know, sometimes we would rotate, wow. and I, I would be on the four. How wow. tall are you? How tall are you, Christy? I'm very short. I'm <laughs> less, a little less than five four. But on my good days, I made it to five four. Okay. Not not so, sure today, but on my good days. Oh, that's I, great. Today's so, not a good. Day. I you, know. you, uh, you played basketball, and then I, and then apparently you started doing tough, tough man, tough woman contest, whatever you want to call them. Right. Yeah. You know that was a big deal in Southern West Virginia. Everybody went to the tough man contest. So I was like, "Come on, do a women's." Why? I thought this was a good idea. I have no idea. You know, I did. I don't know why. Why that even came to my into my mind? But I was like, "Let let me try it," and, did, and I it, I did. Never well, dreaming that it was gonna go where you know where it ended wow. up. I mean, did you get into fights growing up at school, or were, were you were you a fighter, or were you more of kind of quiet? And... I get into some fights, but I think I'm really quiet, to be honest. I'm really, really shy. Um, so yeah, I kind, I'm kind of laid back, but yet I'm an athlete. Like I, you know, hey, if I if I scored on you, I let you know. I, I love to talk trash, so, <laughs> whether it was in basketball, boxing, or whatever. You know, but, but, you yeah, know. no matter what. You can't talk that much trash in boxing. You got a mouthpiece in. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, when you knock someone out, you can stand over them just a little bit and strike that yeah. pose. I, I've done that several times. I know you, you know. Um, you know. So did you have an actual amateur career? You just jump right to the pros? Nope. Because when I, as I was coming up, again, I never thought about being a boxer. But women weren't even allowed to be amateur boxers when, when you know, I was at that age. Oh wow! So when I turned pro, women couldn't box amateur. Yeah, because yeah, a long time ago. I, I read that you know in the first the part of your career in your prime, I guess we would say you were the um what they call it the the WBC uh, pound for pound champion that was, that was some title like that, right? Look, you know with Don King, and we all know Don King. 
uh, they they made up all kinds of stuff. They made up all kinds of titles for me. But the WBC did kind of give me uh, give me uh, or an award me like a trophy. I had a belt, the, you know, the regular WBC belt. So I was proud of it. It really didn't. I didn't beat anybody to get it. It was just it was kind of just a little symbol of hey, we we're, we're taking notice of what you're doing. Wow. Well, um, cool. For a sport that doesn't give a shit about us, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, you know. Yeah. Well, well, so when you would prepare, would you spar primarily women? Would you spar men? Would you mix it up? I, I sparred guys coming up. I mean, at the end of my career, when I started, you know, getting a little tired and a little soft and a little bit like, I'm not sure I keep, I want to keep doing this. I sparred with a couple of women, but uh, for the most most part, I, I sparred with a couple the guys all the way through. It was one, one of my guys, Jimmy Maloney. He's in the documentary. He was with me pretty much from the beginning to the end. Wow. That's good. So you guys work good together, which is what you think. We did. And, and uh, he fought seven world champions. I mean, he fought Vargas. He fought Randall Bailey. He fought real punchers. They stopped him, but he got in there with them. Uh, right. So he brought some great experience to the ring, you know, for me as a sparring partner. Well, that, when did you discover your power? Was that early on you knew it or did it develop? Um. Good question. I, I knocked out some people that before I had ever even been into a boxing gym. So, I, yeah, I think I think power is is God given, but you can improve it. And no. for whatever reason, I I think I had a little bit of God given power, but I did improve it as time went on, shortening up my shots, getting a little more twist, putting a little more butt into it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um... <clears throat> Who was the hardest puncher you ever you ever fought? Um, gee, you know what? The truth is, Jeremy, everybody fought their A game when they fought me. They they hit me with shit that I damn, I, I didn't think they had that kind of power. Um <laughs> I mean, clearly Layla was so much bigger than me. Um, uh, she was strong. She was just just strong. She was just too physically strong, too physically big, uh, for me to be in there with. I mean uh, yeah. Uh I wanted to ask you about that. So she was about six inches taller, but were you the same weight? Because she looked way bigger. No. No. Um, I left my hotel room weighing 147. And, of course, I weighed in with army fatigues and, and you know, stuff in my pockets and everything. I got up to 162 or something like that. And, and then they still had to buy pounds from me. So, yeah, by the time we got to the ring, she was, she was a good probably 30 pounds heavier. Wow. Because, you know – Jeremy, what are you doing? It's kind of scary. Oh. Jeremy, what are you doing over there? <laughs> um, the the because when when you watch that fight, you know the size difference was was so so obvious, and you know I feel like if you guys would have been the same weight, it would have been uh, naturally it would have been a way different story. Yeah, I mean I was confident. I, I still going into the fight. She caught me with the first right hand she threw, real high on my head, and like I was done. She does it. It took her a little bit of time. She never really figured out that I was done that early. Um, but, but yeah, I, I was confident. I thought she's ne I'm going to hit her like she's never been hit before. Uh, but she, she just was too big. She was too big. Yeah, too big. And that, you know, because people don't realize you really only had one loss the first, I think, 13 years of your career, which is yeah. impressive. Um, and then you had that the the first loss I think was a was a really close fight which you beat her like the very next in the rematch you beat her right right yeah Andrea what? Deschamps it was a really close fight it was early in my way early in my career and um, you know I didn't have a trainer I didn't go to the gym I just was in basketball shape so mm. I, you know it was before I really realized how serious boxing is oh that was before you yes were really very yes back. um yeah. I mean. But going the first, you know, 13 years undefeated was, was amazing. And at, at what point do you remember, um, do you remember people, the, the promoters hitting you up and you starting to get that kind of, that kind of heat behind you where they start putting you on the pay-per-view on the Tyson undercards? When did that start? Yeah, I mean, it, it never really happened until, like, Don King and then, but King just treated me, to me, he treated me like a fighter. He didn't treat me any, any special any special treatment, any special anything, go out there and fight. If you put on a good show, the fans like you, I'm going to keep putting you on. And that's mm -hmm. what he did. Uh, the fans, I, I, you know, I, I think I have a, had a fan-friendly style. 
So they would want to see me and they couldn't, they really couldn't believe that this woman in pink is out there bleeding everywhere and fighting, you know, like <laughs> a man. So they, you know, for whatever reason, uh, the fans seemed to, to buy into it. And I, I kept fighting hard and he put me out there. Then I got the chance to fight under Tyson and it was, you know, it was definitely history at, from that point. At, at what point, if you don't mind talking about it, when did your, your, your ex-husband start training you? Or um, he started training me, um, I think I had had about seven pro fights, and he started training me in January of 91, I think it was. Was he, was, did he ever box? Did he do anything? Yeah, right? actually, he was a boxer. He boxed, and, and he was a sparring partner with Marvin Johnson. Oh. I know you know Marvin Johnson. I mean, yeah. light heavy, a great, during that great light heavyweight era, yeah. uh, Marvin Johnson was a champion. Okay, and? And and was he your your trainer throughout your whole career until the end? Yes. Okay. Yes. But he was one of those guys that, and Jeremy, I know you can attest to this. Like, there's those guys that are, are good amateur trainers. He was a good solid trainer. Gave me, I felt like gave me good basic skills, but he taught me everything that he knew. So I was, I needed to go to that that person that was that was more experienced at that elite level. Yep, but I, because he was he was so arrogant and he didn't want anybody else to have any say or ever have my ear. You know, I think that was the biggest fear. He didn't want anyone else to, to be able to tell me this guy is, is treating you like shit. Um, right. And and so he kept me very secluded from from everybody. Boxing right. world, family, friends, everybody. Do you think that would have anything happen? That Would that have any bearing on what happened to you and him later in life? That oh, for sure. I, it was all leading into it, uh, Jeremy. He told me he told me before he married me that if I left him, he would kill me. Of course, I was 23 years old, so I really didn't take it seriously. But he told me so many times over the next 18 years, you know, if you leave me, I'll kill you. Uh, at some point, I, and I, I keep saying, you know, I, I go back in my mind and try to figure out what that point was uh, that I started believing it. I didn't just believe it. I knew it was going to happen. Really? Wow. Yeah. He was, and he's uh, was older than you, right? Yeah, he's he's a lot older than I am. Uh, he's like twenty five years older than I am. God, and, man. yeah, wow. he was older than my dad. What the hell was I thinking, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, oh, and now, if I'm not mistaken, you're married to a former female fighter, correct? Yes, Lisa Hollowine is my wife, and we actually boxed each other on the um, Lewis Rockman rematch. Really? Yes. And you won, yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that was my last fight with Don King. It was on HBO pay per view. So, you know, it was a, uh, and it was actually my best fight ever, I think. But is that how you guys actually met? Yeah, actually, it was. Wow. Wait, and, how did you hit your feeling for her? What was that? How did yeah, you... well, I didn't know her then. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. I was just trying to knock her out that night. <laughs> I'm trying to get paid, shit, man. Um. <laughs> No. That's that's crazy, and, and and you guys have been together how long now? Um, November will be four years. Oh, that we've been married. Yeah, that's great. Um, did you always like women as well or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I yes, yes, and, and Jim <laughs> knew that. Jim, Jim knew that. So I mean, yeah, I, I was faithful to Jim, but I, uh, yeah, I was faithful to boxing, and I was, what? and because of being faithful to boxing, I was faithful to Jim. Okay. Okay. Then. So, okay. So, so you go the first 13 years of your career, um, undefeated. And then I guess, I mean, the only, which was the loss where you had, uh, oh, against Sumia? So, so Maya Anani. You, and it, you had, uh, tell me if I'm wrong here. You, you barely lost that one too, but it was very close, but you, they right. said you were got a cold. Well, we were supposed to fight like the month or six weeks earlier in Las Vegas. And I, I really didn't feel well. I got there, I, I, you know, just a couple days before. I got there like 10 days before. So I'm thinking when I left Florida, you know, by the time middle of the week comes around, I'll be feeling fine. But I really wasn't. So, um, yeah, so I pulled out. And that's the only fight in my career, I'm pretty sure, that I pulled out of. And um, she was really an ass about it. Her husband was an ass or boyfriend or whatever. And... Um, and so then we had the fight in, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, like six weeks later or something. And I lost that close decision. She's a strong girl. She's, she's awkward. She's a strong. She's strong. She's awkward. Mm -hmm. She doesn't throw straight punches. Um, she won the fight. I mean, I, can, yeah. I, have, I have a list uh, of reasons why, 
But it doesn't matter. The judge just thought she won. At the end of the day, she won. Fuck it. Let's keep moving. That's it. Cash, cash my check and, you know. Yeah, so what, what, are you, uh, what are you doing nowadays in West Virginia or Virginia, whatever you're at? I'm in Texas. And uh, I'm think- doing promotions oh. in um, uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, promoting fights in, in Orlando, uh, Florida. So, you know, I'm busy with the promotions. I'm doing a lot of stuff for domestic violence awareness, speaking all over the country and prisons and at domestic violence shelters, um, schools, a- any place. I'm going to a boxing gym in Chesapeake, Virginia next week. Uh, for it's it's a grow they call it grow event and uh, I'm excited about that that's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, great. That's we're combining really... uh, we're combining boxing and this is this is what I want to do with my nonprofit Chrissy's Champs. You know, we combine boxing and domestic violence and people think it's a strange combination, but the truth is it's a very reasonable combination. If you think about these are the kids that we need to to reach out to. They're usually <laughs> the ones that are in the homes where they're they're seeing domestic violence and. And, and sometimes part of it. So we, if we can make their lives a little easier and, and change their way of thinking, we're doing our job. That's great. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, Jeremy always jumps to the end asking people what they're doing now, but I always I had some questions from before. Um, why did you fight me St. John the second time later on? Yeah, that was stupid because I had already had the stroke. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I basically lied to the commission in California they they had my brain scan from a few months earlier, like whatever, when I had fought in, in California. So I didn't tell them I had had a stroke, but I was an arrogant ass. And I thought, you know what, on my very worst, worst, worst day, and on Mia's very best, best day, there's no way she can beat me. But um, that's, not, that's not what happened. You know, I... Well- yeah, I mean, for those people watching, you already beat her pretty easily years earlier. Um, and at this, your last fight, if I'm not mistaken, what, you're about 44, your last fight? Probably, it was like 44. You know, I wanted to get that 50th win. And to be honest, I needed a, I needed a payday. Um, yeah, but it was dumb. It was dumb. As the, the worst 10 seconds of my career was staying on my knee against Layla. The worst decision I made in my career was to fight Mia the second time after a stroke. Wow. Wow. Um, who, who would you have want to fight? Yeah. What's that? Who would you want to fight? Who would I want to fight? Anybody that you, that you wanted to. Oh, well, come on. You know you know who that is, Lucia. I, I signed a contract to fight her uh, for a million dollars, and then like seven, Ooh. eight days before the fight, she pulled out. And what? there was She supposedly ruptured her Achilles tendon, but people that were in the gym that night said she walked out. So most of the time I hear about ruptured Achilles tendon, people don't get up and walk out, so. I, I don't know what the truth is. Um, you know, Bob Aaron was supposed to be the promoter and lots of rumors, you know, why the fight didn't happen. I think that fight didn't happen because Lucia didn't know she could beat me. Lucia Riker? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, she's a freaking beast. Yeah. <laughs> she has no chin and no heart. There well, you go. I, I wasn't trying to knock her out, so, uh, you know. Yeah. I, I was mean, just yeah. moving around, but... Hmm. For people, for people. So Jeremy and I, um, Chris, you probably don't know, but Jeremy and I met. We were both uh, um, trained by Kevin Rooney. That's how we met years ago. And I always thought that you would have been the perfect fucking candidate for that style. Did you ever consider trying to be trying to go that way with the Tyson style? Yeah, I guess it's actually custom auto style. Um, yeah, you know, every now and then I would like do that just in a round when I was. Usually when things weren't going my way, you know, and as fighters do, we try to find something that'll work. So, you know, I put the fist up under my chin and, and side to side and, and try to, to get in there and land the big hook. Um, but you're right. I think my mentality, because that's about mentality as much yeah. as style. That, that's mentality and, uh, and your body. You know, I'm short and, and I'm, a, I'm a fire hydrant, you know, like Tyson, you know, you're short and strong. And yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh, that, that that would have been a trip to see this little white girl from from Tech, uh, Virginia. West Virginia, yep. West Virginia, coming up. No, I mean, actually, I did it. Mike was sitting at ringside for uh, when I fought Sue Chase, and oh. was right there at, at the scorers table. You know, like the the commission table. Didn't get no. And, and I put my hands under my chin, gave a you know it was my tribute to Tyson for sitting at ringside to watch the fight. Uh, gave a little bit of side to side and, and landed some some hooks. Because you were you were often compared, you were like the female type, right? I mean, that's what people looked at you as. 
happen. I, I think, uh, yeah, they made, made that comparison, but, you know, I don't have that kind of power. I, I, I tried. I tried to no. take everybody out with every punch, but um, I, I, did, I, uh, I had good power for a female fighter, I think. I think you're being a little modest. I think you had, your power was definitely up there, was up there with the best. Um, I, I had good, good power. Yeah, I, was you, a little, I was a little smarter fighter than people gave me credit for. A uh, mm -hmm. little, little faster than than people thought. A, a little more technically sound, and, and and part of that was my own fault because if I didn't have to be, I wasn't gonna be. I was just gonna be reckless and and let's go fight. It was more mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. hey, did uh, biggest payday was that million dollar fight that never happened? That would have been the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other than that, you know, of course it was Layla, but. Yeah, I, I did okay. I mean, for a female fighter, I, I was, you know, you did did okay. Mar Marcanti said, you know, you know Art Marcanti, the referee, right? Yeah? Oh, yeah. He He's says, right. He thinks you could uh, you could beat some men. No, yeah. no, that's that's nice. You know, if we picked up somebody off the street, that's probably, you know. <laughs> Male man -ish, Halfway kind of drunk and, and never been hit before. Yeah, I could get that guy, but. So, yeah. uh, so, Chrissy, what do you think about today's, uh, the whole trend with the YouTubers boxing? Do you think it's good for the sport? Do you not like it? Personally, I don't like it. And, and I know some people say, yeah, but because of them, we're talking about boxing. Well, I get that. But are we talking about boxing in the right way? And are, do we have the right kind of conversations going on about boxing because of the YouTubers and, you know, the media guys? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> Personally, I don't like it. I mean, how do you tell this guy that can really fight, that's going to the gym, busting his ass every day, making, you know, a few thousand dollars to keep fighting? You know, you're going to be a world champion someday and making those millions. And then you get this guy that's never boxed before. He walks in off the, you know, off the street, basically, has a fight and makes millions of dollars. I mean, it's, it's hard to justify that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of real fighters get very bitter because, you know, Jake Paul, his last fight made $700,000. Some fighters never see that in their whole career. World champions. Right. You know? Seven, um, wait, 700 that his first fight. No, right. it was, his, was um, that his... That was his first fight. First or second, but the, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so... So okay, so you think it's good. Um what do you what about the current well first of all, what do you think about the legends fighting? And secondly, would you ever do it if you were approached? Um, I have been approached, but because of the stroke, they're telling me that I can't. But actually I'm going to see the uh, my neurologist Friday in Vegas. And um, you know, if he gets the brain a check, go go fight if you want. We never know what might happen. Um I don't know. You know the truth is you want to see the legends because you love their names. You love the energy that they brought to the ring. But then I also feel like somebody's going to get hurt. And then, mm -hmm. then what's going to happen? You know, I mean, it's going to hurt boxing. And then you don't want to see any of these guys that, that you grew up loving and idolizing um, to get injured. Yeah, you also, another thing, like if, if you get two seasoned veterans in the ring and, and they know it's an exhibition and they, they have conversation before – they do their exhibition. I think that could be fun because you know then, then you, know, you, you you can play around. You can have fun with what you're doing. But if you get some young kid that has nothing but a, a YouTube following versus some other, some other guy, you know they're gonna try. He's gonna try and beat the shit out of each other. You know, he's, he's gonna. I mean, I don't. I don't like. I don't like that whole you know, YouTube guys versus fighters because then you know. If we hurt, if we really hurt somebody, oh, it's shame on us. Yes, but what's going to happen one of these days, one of these YouTube guys is going to jump up and hit somebody and hit them with a good shot. And whether you mean to or not, it's just your, your, uh, your reaction. It's what you've been trained to do over and over. You're going to come back with that, that big left hook or that big right hand. And then, then, then what happens? You know, it's, That's true. it's, it's, it's instinct and re reflexes. Uh, yeah, we'll um, see. How, how do you think you would have done against in your prime against Clarissa Shields? In my prime, I I, uh, I knock her out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She kind of walks going backwards, and I'm doing nothing but coming forward. And that's my guy right there, Benny Aguilar. He's coming up to Myrtle Beach to fight August 28th against another undefeated kid. And so, 
they, you know, what's up, Benny? This, these so, guys are real fighters. They're not afraid to put it on the line. Uh huh. So, so talk to us a little bit about about your promotion company. Um, oh, I uh, that or you want me to talk about being clear so shields? No, you know what? <laughs> no. I, I like yeah, I told you already. I like talking shit, right? Um, no, hear it. Let's no, hear that. I, you know what? This is the whole thing with Clarissa. I mean, more power to her. Great. She's a, probably the well. She is definitely the greatest amateur uh, female boxer of all time from any uh, worldwide, right? Okay, let's give her that. But she's not that she's not the quote as she's named herself. Um, if she were boxing in the 90s, not just I would beat her, but I could give you a list of women that would beat her. Um, okay. And and you know what, to make yourself marketable, you don't go out there and tell people that boxing doesn't deserve you. You know, and you don't go out there and say as a female that you could knock out triple G. Come on. Really? That, that doesn't how does that win you over fans? And if oh. you think if you truly think that, then, then you know you're more delusional than I could have ever imagined. And what, but, what do you think about her? Also, jump. I don't know. Jeremy, Jeremy doesn't really follow current boxing that much, but she jumped into MMA, Jeremy. So she's currently fighting box. She's fighting and she's fighting in MMA. What do you think about that, uh, Christy? Doing kind of both simultaneously. I, uh, you know, I, I don't really understand the ground game of MMA, so I can't appreciate what they do. I know. I know they're all very good, at, you know, at that. But um, hey, you know, I, I give her props. I give her props. She's she's out there. She's doing it. She's you know doing the best thing she can. But maybe to take a little bit of that arrogance off uh, would win her over more fans if she would just you know, hey, somebody walked through this door before me and made it a lot easier for me to come through. She thinks she talks like she's the first female that ever boxed, and and there were lots of us. There were lots before me, and then there were lots during my time that, that we are the ones that really changed the outlook of uh, boxing. I would, I would venture to say, I would venture to say, you, you are one of the first ones that made national headlines. So everybody before you, yes, they may have done a great job, but at this point, the GOAT is you. Yeah, she is. I think she's frozen, but no, she is absolutely the first one. You hear us, Christy? You there? Like I said, you know what? I was in the right place at the right time with King and with Tyson and all that, but I was ready to take advantage of the opportunity. And and you know what? With me, is what you see is what you get. Um, no no fluff. You know, I'm just the girl next door. You can go knock on your neighbor's door right now, and it could be me. But, but, but what, you hear what I said? Because you, huh? you froze. No, I did hear what you said. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. But, but well, one thing about you as well is you have this. You had the skill. You know what I mean. You weren't just there at the right place, right time. The skill was there. The exciting style was there. Um, you know, all those things combined. And yeah, I think you are the you are the very first. You're the you're the godmother of this. <laughs> you know, I I think, and then like that is it's all timing. You know, I was I, I came at the right time, and and I think the fight with Deirdre, Deirdre Gogarty, and, and she deserves as much credit as I do. I mean, we were both in that ring that night, both of us fighting our butts off. We, together, changed the way that the boxing world sees women's boxing. Yeah, oh. yeah absolutely. Um, At least past after that fight, more promoters started giving women an opportunity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, along with promoting, do you train fighters at all, or do you just promote? Just promoting and um, just promoting and doing the domestic violence speaking and, and staying involved with uh, different shelters and, and trying to, to really help make a difference in, in people's lives. There's no, there's no interest to, to actually train? You, know, really for that. you know what? I, I tried training a couple people in, uh, when I was over in North Carolina. And, um, you know, fighters just don't have the same mentality that, that I, I'm old school. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think you have to spar hard and I think you have to train, you know, you train hard, you train six days a week, you run, you sprint. I, I, I believe all that. And, and fighters, some of the fighters these days don't want to work that hard. Well, yeah. So I'm curious about that. What do, what's the difference you see between back then and the fighters now? Uh, probably a big part of it is, is, is social media. I mean, we make stars out of fighters that, that haven't really proven themselves in the ring. They talk a lot of talk and um and get a big following so they're gonna sell a lot of tickets that's who the promoter's gonna protect 
So we really yep. never see them get challenged. And and in terms of training, what do you? What's the difference you see? And because you're, you're talking about the work ethic, like what's the difference in the work ethic between then and now? Well, I don't know about like this exact work work ethic, but I mean now you have you have a nutritionist, you have a, a strength and conditioning guy, you have a sports psychologist. I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure Carmen Basilio <laughs> and Jake LaMotta and, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson, those guys went to the gym. They had a trainer, and that trainer was their nutritionist, and he was their sports psychologist, and he was all those things. But but he was that because of experience. And, and that's why just because you read it in a book, to me, it doesn't always mean you can relate it to the situation. I agree. So, so they're a little, little softer now. I think so. <laughs> Love. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we still had the dogs. We still had the dogs. You know, I think I think Tank is probably still a dog. He'll go out there and fight. Um, Tia Fimo, you know, I, he talks the talk. He walks the walk so far. And, you know, it's just. But everybody. Limited. That, it's limited. Yeah. We, do have, we have some true fighters out there. There's a couple of them here and there from this country, from that country. But the majority are a bunch of fucking new, what's that? What's that thing? Facebook fucking fighters, man. Back How you call that thing? Instagram. Back Instagram. Here. So, um, so with, with the trainers, that all they do, all they know how to do is mitts. Yep. They, you know, hold the mitts. And they don't but, even. I mean, they they do half the work. The trainer does like probably sixty yeah. percent of it. And, and they, you know, I I ne I never hit mitts like that. My, my, you know, I never hit mitts like that. That's like that's like patty cake you do in kindergarten to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, let's but, get that. Exactly. exactly. But that's this, because we're old school. I got, a couple of shows ago, I said the most, the biggest combination you're going to get off on somebody is a three-piece, maybe four. That's it. Yeah, you're all, not going to do all this 20 punches. No. Hold on. Hold on. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All, yeah, yeah. It ain't, it ain't going that way. It's not no. going that way. No. Um, we got a lot of people who, uh, we got a lot of people who think they know boxing. We got a lot of people who, who love the sport and want to do it for exercise. And, and, and I'm, that's great. It, it just, you know, makes makes all of our local gyms make money. So that's great, you know, but li let's leave the fighting to the guys who really can fight. The I guys agree with you. I agree with you exactly. because you're right. I mean, it's the greatest workout of all. And, and there are a lot of people that just want to go in there and hit the bag and never have any intention of getting in the ring and competing or sparring or anything like that. And I, I think that's great because those are the people that pay your rent. Yeah. So those are the people that keep the gym going and, and make it, make it uh, viable so that you can train some professional fighters that are just up and coming. Exactly. Um, so uh, of, of current fighters, who, who do you like? Who do you have your eye? Who do you think? So who do you like yeah, that's current? Look, I'm always, I'm gonna watch um, uh, Tyson Fury because you know he he's one of those he's a character right he's a character he, he's a personality he gets it he you know it's a he's he's marketable but when he goes in the ring he takes care of business. Yeah. Um, I like agree. Tia Fimo Tank uh, and you know what I think that uh, somebody that that doesn't maybe get it, no let me Danny Garcia will fight anybody. It seems like to me, you know, he fights, he takes a fight, whether you know, maybe most people say he shouldn't and he makes every fight a fight. And another one is Sean Porter. I mean, Sean Porter is just a junkyard dog. Really? He, to me, he makes, a, he makes all the fights a fight. Um, you, have you heard that the Pacquiao fight is off now, right? I did hear that. But I what? think they put somebody else in there. They did. Yeah. Uh, Ugas, right? Someone I never, I don't know. Yes. Ugas. How, what do you think, Christy, would have happened if that fight, who, who, who would you have chosen, Pacquiao or Spence? I think it's a really great fight. I mean, uh, I'm not a fan, really, of either. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't drank the Kool-Aid on Spence. <laughs> and and I, think Our that, I think that, you know, Pacquiao's pretty amazing at 40-plus. He can have that body that he has. <laughs> yeah, he's um, right down the so street I He's right. He's changed he's right down the street from me. Yeah. He worked. At, that's it. That little dude works his ass off. Right. And on the other side of that, it's like, dude, you're forty. Right. 
or 43, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. It, so, I mean, so I, I, he's got like five titles now. You know, five, uh, seven. Yeah, so, a lot. I assume you would go, you'd lean towards Fury against Wilder in the third fight. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I think Fury has his number. I mean, you know, it'll be one of those things if they fight, you know, 100 times, he's going to probably win 95 of them, you know. Well, the problem, is, not the problem, but the, I'm sure you've heard this, the argument some people are saying is Fury cheated somehow or another, um, which I don't but think. Every how, how did he cheat? I mean, come on, you're in Las Vegas. That's one of the strongest co commissions that we have. And, yeah. and they, they, they take the gloves before you fight. They take the gloves after you fight. You know, you, you, you pee in a cup before, you pee in a cup after. How how else can you cheat? I agree with you. I agree with you. But for some, there's something about that fight. I feel like more than any other fight in a long time that people just keep coming up with these conspiracy theories of why Fury won. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, I also let let's talk about why Wilder said he lost because his costume that he wore to the ring was too heavy. That was the first one. First oh, was that? Oh, that was the first one. Okay, that was the first one. That was the draw. He said, yeah, he said that. Um, uh, I think he said that Mark Breland. Drugs. And then Mark Breland threw the towel in. Come on, Mark Breland saved your butt from getting knocked out. Mm -hmm. And counted well, he, out. He also, out. Claimed, he, he, um, also claimed that the water was, was – he was drugged or something like that in his water. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, the, 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 there's a lot of them. Um, my, my mother would say, rest in peace, Mom. She would say, excuses are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, absolutely, well, absolutely. Well, Christy, man, thank, thanks for taking the time with us. We appreciate it. Um, for sure. And I'd love to have you back on when you have a minute. Uh, we're definitely going to check out your, your special. When does it come out? It comes out Tuesday, actually, 12.01 a.m. It will be available on Netflix, East Coast time, 12.01 East Coast time. What's it called? Deal with the Devil. The It's Untold is the series. The first one came out Tuesday. That's the runner test story. And then uh, we're the second we're the second episode in the Untold um, group of, of uh, documentaries. But mine specifically is Deal with the Devil. That's great. And, you know, we, 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 we commend you not only for being a great fighter, but, all, you know, in your personal life, everything you've been through and the fact that you're, you know, it seems like you've gotten, gotten through it stronger and better. You know, it's really admirable. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for taking the time. Well, I'll see yeah. you soon. Let's talk soon. Bye-bye. For sure. Have a good one. You yeah. too. Bye-bye.